In 2016, researchers learned bacterial leaf streak was in the United States after confirming the disease in Nebraska. During the 2017 growing season, BLS made its earliest arrival yet, appearing in Nebraska corn in the fourth leaf stage. Through a Nebraska Corn Board-funded survey, researchers know the disease is present in nearly two-thirds of the state's counties. Nebraska Extension plant pathologist Tamara Jackson-Zims joined us in Kearney last week to further discuss new information on bacterial leaf streak. Today at the Nebraska Crop Management Conference, I was talking about a research update on some of the things that we've learned in the last year, year and a half. And so, for example, in one of my graduate students' projects, we know now that bacterial leaf streak has been confirmed in corn samples from 60 Nebraska counties, including as far west as Box Butte County out in the Panhandle. We also know now, too, from some of her projects that we have a number of different plant species in Nebraska that are also susceptible to these bacteria, ranging from our common big blue stem grass uh, to bristly foxtail grass and even oats. And so we hope that people will become familiar with what these species are and help us to watch for them. Was it as prevalent in 2017 as it was the year before? You know, we had bacterial leaf streak in 2017 in a lot of places, but by most accounts, I think people thought that there was less of it this year, this past year. And so that's probably due to some different weather conditions that maybe weren't as favorable as what we've had in the past. But by no means should we let our guard down. The bacteria is still here. We're likely to see it again in 18 or beyond. Do we know more about how it's moving, how it's spreading? No, we don't have any new information about that except that there's only limited evidence from some of our research colleagues at Iowa State telling us that that seed transmission does not seem to be important. Very little to no bacteria found in or on the seed, but that we do still know it's in crop residue. And so if we're moving corn stover around, we could be transporting it. And we know during the season that wind and rain and irrigation could help move it as well. Can you expand more on the hosts and why it's important that it is in what it's in? Sure, and so it's, it's unclear at this point how important these hosts are, but in greenhouse testing, we know that not only oats, but even rice has come up as susceptible, followed by some of our weeds like the bristly foxtail, uh, We've also got green foxtail, and a surprise for us was yellow nutsedge. Yellow nutsedge is not a grass, it's in a completely different plant family, and so we need to look beyond the grasses. Well, in addition to that, we've also found that our top three perennial prairie grasses in Nebraska are susceptible in the greenhouse conditions of big blue stem, little blue stem, and Indian grass as well as our orchard grass and timothy. And so we're continuing to test other species in the greenhouse, as well as to check the inside of the plant to see if bacteria can reproduce there as well. So we have a lot more results coming from these studies later on, so stay tuned. Can BLS impact yield? It's likely that it can when it's severe. We had a trial out in 2017, although our data were limited from that trial, we didn't have the disease severity we needed to really get a good study conducted. And so I think uh, that's gonna be hybrid specific and of course depend on the severity. And so in many cases, I think you'll see a little to no impact on yield, but in some of our more susceptible hybrids, I think there's definitely a possibility of having an impact. What management options do producers have then? So management options are more limited with bacteria and it's important that we make an accurate diagnosis because foliar fungicides are not effective against bacteria. And so when we think about residue borne pathogens like this one, we have to think about breaking that cycle. In many parts of the state, crop rotation or sometimes tillage practices may or may not be practical. Uh, they may have some impact, but it's not gonna stop disease. I think ultimately the best the best that we can do will be to have resistant hybrids, and we're just beginning to get uh, into some of that. Can you go more into that with the hybrids and what we might know about that? Yes, and so we know working with a lot of our seed companies that hybrids are reacting differently. Well, that's good news. It tells us that there might be resistance already out there. But in addition, we're also working with a collaborator from the plant introduction station over at Iowa State at Ames, Iowa. And we know now looking at the limited 96 lines that we looked at that there was a wide range of reactions from these publicly available germplasm lines. And so that tells us that in some of those old 
the germplasm lines, there is possibly some resistance there that is available to some of our breeders. And so we hope to expand on that in future studies. But that is very promising that we may have something available already.